book of Matthew chapter 28. Last Sunday we preached to you on Christ's steps to the cross and we tried to paint a picture of the, of the agony of that cross and uh, of what all Christ did on the cross of Calvary. We may touch on a little bit of that again this morning. But we're grateful that the, the story did not end there. This story begins way back before the foundation of time. Far as as far as you could could think of, God's had a plan for the salvation of mankind. Christ's sacrifice was not a uh, something that God just all of a sudden thought about or something that occurred to Him. Uh, has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? God always has His plans are always uh, infinite and they're always uh, far removed from our our thought process. But God had a plan. And uh, his plan was to send his son, so he sent him through the virgin birth, and we celebrated Christmas. Now, since Christmas, we've been preaching messages God just gave them to us one after the other about the life of Christ and about his miracles and all the things that he has done. And we came to last Sunday where Christ was crucified, how they uh, took him and they nailed him to a cross. And as he hung there on that cross, he paid my sin debt, he paid your sin debt, he sacrificed himself so that I might go free. In Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 1, we read the story of his resurrection. Christ is not on the cross. Christ is not in the tomb. Amen. He is living. Amen. And alive today. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. 
And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' words. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. We know the proofs of the resurrection from the sunrise service. When they finally caught up to where Jesus was at, Jesus said, all hell. And you know what that means? Oh, joy. Those two words mean, oh, joy. And that's what Jesus said, because there was great joy in his heart uh, because of the resurrection. And for all those of all mankind, there is great joy in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. As he died on the cross of Calvary, as we saw that picture last week, we saw that, God, that Jesus was fully man. He suffered like any other man would, but, but much more so he suffered on the cross of Calvary as he was slain uh, as a lamb before God. And as that perfect sacrifice was slain, he died and he, was, he suffered the pains that any man would face, any man would suffer. You, next time you get hurt and you, re, you remember how much Christ suffered in his body for you and for, for me. And friend, it just got a hold of me in the last few weeks that his body ached and his body hurt beyond our imagination because he loved me and because he loved you. So we see that his sacrifice on the cross as being, as being man, his sacrifice paid my sin debt. Now I cannot ever explain to you the magnitude of sin that is, that is mine, the magnitude of sin that is all just mine. And how, how, how much that that must have weighed on the shoulders of the Lord Jesus Christ and upon Him. But you know what? I can't imagine that multiplied by millions of every man's sin that He died for the sins of many. And for the sins of all, Christ died for. And He bore their sin debt. He bore yours. He bore mine. Friend, I was saying last week how that when I sin. There's a great heavy load comes upon me. There is something comes over me and a cloud of darkness comes over my soul. And until I get that straightened out, until I ask for forgiveness, that's a burden upon me. But I want to tell you something, friend. When I ask for forgiveness, God gives me forgiveness. And He sets me on a straight path again. And I go on my way. But I can't imagine having the sins of this church on me. Amen. I can't imagine that. But Christ had your sins. He had my sins and the sins of whosoever, amen. All those he had them on him when he died the death of the cross on Calvary. So we see him as fully man. Number one, Christ sacrificed. He paid my sin debt. And then number two, his death alone finished the sacrifice. His death alone finished the sacrifice. You know what the last thing Jesus said as he was hanging on the cross? He said, it is finished. What was finished? The sacrificial death of the Lamb of God was finished on the cross of Calvary. The work was done. What work was done? He paid your sin debt. He paid my sin debt. You say, preacher, you keep talking a lot about that. I want you to understand, when Christ died for you, He died for your sins. Not for the righteous man did Christ come, but He came for the lost man. And you and I are the lost man. Whoever's not called on Jesus is a lost man and they're going to hell without God. Those that don't accept Jesus will die a death and go to hell without God. But those that accept His sacrifice on the cross of Calvary and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be saved and go to heaven when they leave this world. Friend, I'm glad for that simple plan. It's not complicated. It's not hard to understand Jesus died for my sins. And when He died, He said, the last thing He said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. What does that mean? That means that no one took his life from him, but he freely gave his life. No one, you know, they say, well, they killed Jesus. They killed Jesus. 
in human thoughts and in human ways, that is what can be said. But they did not kill him. They did not take his life because he gave himself for you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his Son. His Son gave his life for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. So his death alone finished the work that the Father had planned. Now Christ's resurrection, as surely as the death of Christ proves that he was fully man, Christ's resurrection proves that he is fully God. Amen. If he was man when he died on the cross of Calvary, his resurrection proves that he is the true God, the the one God. He was the God-man. His resurrection is the foundation of Christianity. Now, friend, God being who he is, Christ being who he is, He is the only one with the ability to resurrect him. He's the only one in history that's ever resurrected them them themselves from the grave, from the dead. Christ is. It's him. It's him alone. No other one can you find in history that resurrected themselves from the dead. The resurrection of the cross is as the foundation of all mankind. As a man, he, he, he faced death and gave up the ghost. As God, he resurrected himself from the grave. Now, friend, the man died on the cross, but as the God-man, he resurrected himself out of that grave. Now, listen, when he died, what did he do? He went, to, he went down uh, to the middle of the earth, to the center of the earth, and he took paradise, and he took it back to glory with him. And, friend, that's all those Old Testament saints. I can just imagine as he walked into paradise, and Abraham said, Father, oh, Father. And, and uh, Jesus said, It's me. I've come to get you. And he looked over there, and there's Moses. Moses, come on. And as the, as the thousands that were there in paradise, he took them out of that captivity of paradise where they were just there for a short time. And then he took them, he took them to glory now, and that's where they are today looking on at you and I maybe. But anyway, I want to tell you what's, what's, what's the truth. That Christ, as he did that, he also went to the devil and said, Give me them keys. I'm taking the keys of death and hell. Guess what he done? He took the keys of death and hell. And after that, he, he, he came out of that tomb. He was resurrected. Now, only God could do that. So we see from all that Jesus did, you say, now how can you prove all that? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You must believe. You must have faith in the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hear him by the word of God. You must believe what the word of God says. Now look, I can preach to you till I'm blue in the face, but except you believe the gospel, except you believe the scripture, you'll never understand the resurrection of Christ. I just believe it. It had to be God. I've, I've stood over a lot of, of dead folks. I've stood over a lot of bodies laying in, in, in caskets. And I've never seen one of them get up. Nobody else has either. But when Christ arose and they went to that empty tomb, they found him risen from the dead. How? Because, you know, when I was younger, I thought that that stone was rolled away so that Christ could come out. But the stone wasn't rolled away so that Christ could come out. The stone was rolled away so that others could look in and see that he was missing. Amen. He resurrected himself without the help of man. So his uh, resurrection has been the foundation of our faith. Uh, we're the only religion, Christianity is the only religion that has a living founder. If you could go to whole where Buddha's at today, what would you find? A statue and particles of decay. Any of the others that you can think of that founded a religion, and, 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 and are dead now, they're still dead. They, they will never resurrect themselves. But you and I as believers today, you and I as Christians today, we have a living founder. We have a living one that we can go to and that we can talk to and that we can have a conversation with this man named Jesus. Why? Because he arose from the grave. Because he's not there. He was talking to his disciples before he died as he hung on the cross. He was talking to people, and when he got out, he resumed talking. He resumed speaking to others. 
He's the founder of our Christianity. We're called Christians because of Christ and because that we are should be Christ one, like unto him. So we're the only one with the Christians are the only one with a living founder. And Christians are the only one that can can talk to their founder and to be heard of their founder. No other one can. Friend, I'm telling you, this resurrection of Christ is the is the is the truth of salvation. Without it, there's nothing else. His resurrection proves that our faith is not in vain. Now, the devil will tell you sometimes that your faith is in vain, that, you, that all you believe is no good. But let me tell you, let me say, tell you what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? There are still those today that deny that he was resurrected. Many, many will tell you that he was a person that lived on earth. Many will say that he was a great prophet. Uh, many historians, Josephus, admitted that Christ was upon the earth and that he was a good man and that he was a prophet. But not so many will admit or will believe that he was resurrected from the dead. So, verse 13, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. If Christ be not risen from the grave, then I have no business standing here preaching to you. I, ha I have nothing to preach to you today if Christ be not risen from the dead. My, all the preaching I can do is in vain if Christ be not risen from the dead. And guess what? If he's not risen from the dead, your faith is in vain. Man is still in his sins if he be not risen. But I'm glad I have the, the truth and the proof of the Word of God that He is risen, that He's a risen Savior. Friend, we, we, we hold a lot upon the resurrection of Christ. We put a lot in the resurrection of Christ because without the resurrection, there is no plan of salvation. Salvation's plan ends with, with the resurrection of Christ as man believes on Him, our, our, plan, our, our resurrection, our salvation uh, gospel is in the resurrection. Yea, and we, the Bible says, verse 15, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Now, friend, how important is the resurrection of Christ? How important is his resurrection? He did pay our sin debt. That's what the sacrifice was. But he proved that payment and, he, and the payment was accepted. And as he said and as he prophesied of his own self that he was resurrected himself on the third day, Easter Sunday, Christ arose from the dead and he is alive today. And no matter what people may tell you, no matter what people may say, my God's alive and he's well today. And I'm glad that I feel him in my soul. I'm glad that I know a proof of the resurrection is that he lives in my heart and that he lives in my soul. A proof of the resurrection is that empty tomb. And a proof of the resurrection is all those that saw him afterwards and all those that saw him going away. Thousands saw him after the resurrection. You can do one or two things. You can believe that by faith. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. But I have God's Word on it. And you can believe by faith the Word of God or you can be a skeptic in doubt and not believe what the Bible says and go to hell without God. Friend, it's your choice today. Do you know the Lord? Listen, we can live our hearts as believers. And I, I was praying yesterday at work. I guess people thought I was talking to myself again. But I was praying yesterday at work and, and I said, Lord, help me. And it's got a hold of me. I said, Lord, help me that I would live my life like, a, like I believe in the resurrection. Help me to live my life like I really believe the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, help me to live my life that way. If I live my life that way, others are going to see the Lord. Others are going to see that they need Jesus in their life. And if you're here today lost without God, you need Jesus in your life. That's the only way. You say, well, I'll be good. I'll, I'll do my best. And, and uh, one of these days when I die, my good will outweigh my bad. And I'll go to heaven. The mayor of a famous city said last week, 
that he would be the first one into heaven because of his goodness, because of all that he had done. And I seriously have my doubts if that man never even knows God. I don't even believe he knows God. Listen, because of the good you've done will not gain you glory. But it's belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that will save you from hell. Now should we not, listen, if he died and made a way possible for us to live throughout eternity with him in glory, should we not give him ourselves to say, Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee? Should we not give him ourselves and say, Lord, use me? You know, I've had people tell me, I'm meddling a little bit right now, but it'll be all right, I'm about through. I've had people tell me, well, preacher, if I get right with the Lord, I'm going to have to give up a whole lot of stuff. And I've never met anyone that gave up what they called a whole lot of stuff and wasn't much happier for doing so. And those, those things that make people happy today doesn't last for a long time. It's Jesus in your heart and the joy of salvation that will last you from now till you go home to be with Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than anything I know. I'd rather have Him than the riches of this world. I know a lot of uh, people that are well off. And they, there's nothing wrong with being well off financially. There's nothing wrong with having all kinds of money as long as you know the Lord. As long as you know the Lord and are serving the Lord. Amen. God give you all, all He can, I pray. But listen, I'm telling you, I'd rather have Jesus than everything everybody else has got. I'd rather have Him. I'd rather, be, I'd rather be on the side of the road with a sign saying I'll work for food and have Jesus in my heart. Now God, won't, God won't let his people do that, but I'm just telling you, I'd rather be that way and have the joy of salvation in my soul than to have the finest house and the finest home and the finest car that anybody else has got. I'd rather have Jesus in my heart. You know why? Because that will last me for all eternity. These temporal things down here are not going to last long. These temporal pleasures that we that we think we enjoy down here are not going to last for a long time. But what I have inside my soul, hallelujah, will last through all eternity. I'm glad I serve a risen Savior. I'm glad He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives? Hallelujah. He lives within my heart. And I say to you, thank God I serve a risen Savior. Father, we thank you. For the word of God this morning, blessed I pray, if there's someone here that don't know you, touch them, God, with conviction that they might come to know you. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.